Hi everyone, this is Alex Treviño, a 3D artist from Mexico. As a self-taught artist, I work on different projects using Blender and Substance Painter, and I want to share my approach with you. I'm happy to show you the third video of the Lunar Rover series, and in this video, I will explain how I made the UVs. Check out the previous video to learn more about how I model the character. In that video, I explain the main points of fixing problems when modeling and sculpting the character. The concept is the Lunar Rover Vehicle by Matthias Adolfsson. And if you want to see more of his work, check out his social media or his website. Before making the UVs, we must understand the concept of UV unwrapping, the workspace, and how to navigate efficiently inside Blender to do this. UV unwrapping plays a key role in the 3D modeling process. Its primary objective is to ensure the precise application of 2D textures onto the surface of a 3D model. Think of it as creating a canvas for the upcoming texturing phase. The quality of the UVs directly impacts the quality of textures. It is an essential step that sets the stage for great texturing results. I use the UV editing workspace with a 3D viewport on the right and the UV editor on the left. Within the UV editor, I employ a systematic approach for selecting using numeric keys, one for vertices, two for edges, three for faces, and four for islands. Also, I can use standard commands like G for translation, R for rotation, and S for scaling. And to optimize efficiency, I customize the quick menu by adding tools like pack islands and average scale. To make the UVs, you must know how to move within the viewport. You can speed up your workflow by using the numpad, making it easier to switch between different views, focus on an object with frame selected, or hide everything but the selected with local view. Also, if you create very large or tiny objects, they can look clipped. To solve this, we can go to view options and change the clip start when they are tiny objects and clip end for massive objects. Finally, when you have difficult to access areas, you can go to edit mode, select the faces in the way and hide them with H. And when you finish with Alt H, you can unhide them all. Before starting with the UV unwrapping, it is crucial to establish a dedicated UV material. This material is an essential tool aiding in the visualization of orientation, texture resolution and the identification of potential distortions. To create this material, go to the shader editor and use the principled PSDF shader. Add a new image texture, specify the resolution and opt for the color grid option. With this UV material, we are well prepared to tackle the UV unwrapping, ensuring precise mapping and our textures integrity. Now I start with the UV unwrapping. I use the folder order and start with the character, specifically the helmet. Before unwrapping, it is essential to apply modifiers like Solidify and Mirror, ensuring the subdivision or multi-resolution modifiers remain active. Remember to apply all transforms post-modifier application. At this moment, I do not focus on having them in order, so you can put them in any place you prefer. In more complicated meshes, I do different tests, putting the seams in different places and looking for the least possible distortion, but also thinking about hiding those seams as well as possible. Sometimes, even I put the seams in different places, I cannot avoid distortions. In these cases, I redo the mesh until the problem is solved. After the helmet, I tackle the torso, the belt, arms, accessories, legs, and finally the boots. All of this without any complication. With the character completed, my focus shift toward the vehicle. Starting with different sections of the chassis. During the process, I encountered some UV distortion near the seams of certain objects. To address this, I use the UV smooth type keep corners. However, it is advisable to explore all available methods to get an optimal solution for your specific project. Moving on to the suspension area, I encountered no complications and about the wheels, I opted to retain the mirror modifier to optimize the UV space since both wheels are never seen at the same time. I proceed with the engine, the transmission, the steering wheel, and address the issue of the inverted normals on the seat using recalculate outside. Later, I tackle the tanks and the antenna, 
but I encountered a significant UV distortion on the mixer. I applied one subdivision to rectify this, resulting in the desired fix while maintaining the same seams. Continuing with the process, I approached the lamps, selectively hiding faces to access convoluted areas, and I employed the mirror modifier for the front lamps to optimize the UV space. After that, I solved the console, the toaster, the storage, and the mechanical arms. And for the cables, I used Rectify of the Text Tools add-on, which I will talk about later. With the UV unwrapping process almost finished, my focus shift to maximize texture resolution with the GPU memory available. The performance of the 3080 Ti has been instrumental in this project. It offers an excellent rendering capacity, so you can render using only the GPU. And the amount of CUDA cores also improves the rendering speed, helping me render seamless 360 degree videos quickly. Before finishing the project, I need to talk about text tools. Text Tools is a free add-on available for download on GitHub and has proven to be a priceless tool in my workflow. I have to install Text Tools 1.5 with Blender 3.5, confirming compatibility and optimal performance. This add-on calculates texel density, aligns and rectifies UVs, and performs many other important tasks, simplifying texture creation. To finish the unwrapping process, I begin placing objects in different tilesets applying the same texel density to have a uniform quality. I start with the biggest piece, the chassis, and combine it with the maximum number of objects in the same tileset. When finishing the tileset, I send the mesh to Substance Painter to verify the texture is sufficient. For this project, I got six tilesets for the vehicle and two tilesets for the character. And before exporting, I check all tilesets carefully to avoid overlapping. After that, I export the entire scene in FBX format. Additionally, I create separate versions only featuring the vehicle or the character. Lastly, it is only necessary to check that the model is ready to be textured. First, we import the model into Substance Painter using the FBX format and selecting a 4K resolution and OpenGL. After this, I bake the mesh maps in the final resolution to verify that everything works correctly. And with this, we have finished the UVs. Now we know how the UVs work, how to navigate to make this part more manageable, and how to create a material that helps us visualize the quality of the UVs. In the following video, I will show you how I texture the project with Substance Painter. Also, do not forget to join the community and showcase your talent by sharing your creations with the hashtag StudioShare. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and see you in the next video.